Snap out of here. Yeah, I'm sick. Alright. This is gonna help you, right? Go get him, man. What's up with the leg warmers? Huh? Okay, I'm off my mics and starting in three. Welcome to Manual High School for the match between the Denver East Angels and the Montbello Warriors. Again, a mutual side, but technically a home game for the Angels. Tip is won by Montbello and tipped out to Hayes Jr. Ryan Carey guards Cardo at the top of the key. Hayes. Hart loses control of the ball, top forward by Brian Carey, Javon Griffin, and Collier. Collier comes out with the ball. Timeout is called by Brian Carey. And Coach Carey's not happy with them because they was clearly a jump ball. The Angels would have got the ball. But awareness by Brian Carey to call the timeout right when they're about to lose the ball. And Coach Carey advises the officials that his players aren't calling timeouts. Only he can call timeouts. But timeout is charged to the Angels 30 second timeout. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here on Angel.tv. Welcome back to Manual. Brian Carey bringing up the ball for the Angels. First possession of the game for them. Collier's pass inside to Robinson. Robinson moves on TC but has no left ball still in front of him. Carter bringing up the ball for the Warriors. Big crowd here at Manual High School today. First day game the Angels have had in the state of Colorado. Cardo. Ball is stolen. Robinson comes down with it. Brian Carey and the Angels are going to run. Ronnie Burrell from way downtown is no good. Rebounded by Kise. Excuse me, rebounded by Cardo. Cardo guarded by Carey. Cardo loses control. Carey steals it from him. Carey on the fast break. Drives, puts it up, and he's fouled. Foul's called on number 11, Anthony Cardo. His first, his first personal foul, first team foul. What's the key for an Angels victory today, Ray? I think the Angels just got to play conventional basketball, set up pick and rolls for running around, but also use their athleticism because they have such dynamic players like Dominique Collier, the number one ranked in the state. First free throw is missed by Brian Cole. 6.32 to go here in the first period. No score. For the second free throw is up and good for Kerry. The Angels lead 1-0. Angels press. Hart. Hart is trapped. Griffin goes for the CO. Harrell comes out with it. Throws it to Griffin. Griffin takes a bad pass in the car. Passes the carry. Harrell to Collier for three. Women out. Rebounded by Hayes Jr. Hayes Jr. guarded by sophomore standout guard Brian Carey. Hayes throws up the running shot and puts it in. Montpellier regains the lead. Griffin drives and he's fouled. Foul is called by number 15, Malik Hart. This first personal foul, second team foul. Griffin will go to the line and shoot two. One of the ways the Angels can win this game is to be able to penetrate the paint and to get to the free throw line since they're very proficient free throw shooters. First free throw is good for Griffin. 
Run! Second free throw is good as well. Angels continue their full court press defense. Hayes throws it up court to Hart. Beats the press. Hart is corner double team. Jump ball is called. Griffin and Collier battle with Hart. Ball given to the Angels. Aggressive defense for the Angels to start out the game today. Yeah, it is. They set it up the trap. Even past that point where the full court press wasn't even in effect anymore. And they caught Hart in the corner. Griffin. Terry thinks about the shot. He doesn't. Collier spins straight away. Shot. It's good from the top of the key. Great shot by Dominique Collier. Angels lead 5-2. Five, five minutes to go in the first quarter. Ball is stolen by Collier. Terry shoots a three. He drains it. It's rolled to two. Foot was on the line. 7-2 Angels. Angels force the ball out of bounds on the full court press. Still not ball. People filling into the stands here on this gorgeous February day. Two times the oh, shot is swatted by Tyree Robinson. Correll to Griffin. He loses control of the ball. Not the ball. ball. Angels coach is upset with Javon Griffin. Tried to catch the pass with one hand. Montello having a really tough time breaking down the Angels press. What's the key to breaking down a full court press? I think you really need a point guard who has great vision, kind of like a quarterback in football, but also great handles to make moves while also analyzing Case Junior's quarter is up and good. Angels lead 7-4, four, four minutes to go in the first quarter. Go, go, go. Griffin bringing it up for the Angels, not Brian Carey. JJ takes the shot, missed. Rebounded by Cardo. Cardo guarded by Carey and Griffin. Hart. Hart pops a three, it's no good. Rebounded by Ronnie Harrow. Collier drives and gets foul. Foul is called by number zero. Arnie Hayes Jr., his first personal, 13 foul. Again, for what seems like the 10th time this year, the Angels are sporting new shoes. I don't know if I've seen a basketball team with so much diverse wardrobe as the Angels do. It is crazy. Dominic Collier shoot two from the line. Looks like Dominic Collier came out with a mohawk now. Or is that a faux hawk? I'd say throw him up. First shot is good for Collier. <laughs> Angels without a foul in the game so far. Second free throw is missed. Collier goes one of two. Stolen by Brian Carey. Tracked down by Green. Hard charge inside, but putback is there. What a dunk by Troy Green. Collier drives, throws up for Wiener, no good. Perot passes inside to Collier and he'll lay that one in. 10-6 Angels, 3.24 to go in the first quarter. Angels continue to press. Ronnie Harrell's steal attempt is missed. We got... Jump ball called. Possession arrow in favor of the Montpellier Warriors. Inbounding the ball for the Warriors is Keese. Keese throws it inside. Shot is missed by Green. Brian Carey. Five foot nine Brian Carey comes down with the rebound. Javon Griffin pops up. Inside the arc. Missed. Tough defense by Dominique Collier. Hart brings up the ball. Drives inside. No basket. Travel is called. 
checking into the game from our Marbella Warriors is number three, Kendrick Stewart. <laughs> Collier, crossover, tries to cross him up, no luck. Ball is stolen. Green up the court, he's an exciting player, isn't he, Ray? Yeah, he is. Again, rejected by Tyree Robinson. You will see that a few times today, I guarantee it. Two blocks already for him in this first quarter. Kay's shot inside the arc is missed. Rebounded by Harrell, thrown up court to Javon Griffin who pops the two and it's no good, but rebounded by Robinson. Lays it in nicely. Stewart drives inside. Rejected by Tyree Robinson. Barry spins, throws it up. Travel called on the play. Brian Carey knows it. Timeout is called by, Marbella, by the Marbella Warriors. First charge timeout for them. Each team has used one. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching EA Live.TV. Welcome back to EALive.TV. We're watching this DPL matchup between the Montpelier Warriors and the Denver East Angels. Montpelier ranked 33rd in the state. The Angels first. Stewart pops a three. Money. Do you think there's a reason that Brian Carey's not bringing the ball for the Angels so far tonight? I'm not sure. Maybe he wanted to get a fast break going down the court. But the Angels are so versatile in the backcourt that anybody pretty much on their team could bring the ball up. Stewart passes it off to Taylor. Taylor inside to Keith. Keith travels. One minute, 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter. The Angels lead the Montello Warriors 12-9. Good game so far. In a rivalry game like this, are records thrown out? I'm not sure. I think you can never not take account for the Angels being first ranked and Montello being 33rd. There's a big difference between those two types of teams. <laughs> There's still a little bit of rivalry intensity that does affect the game a lot more than people might think. Pyre makes the shot on the other end. Hart guarded by... Oh! The pass to Keith, he slams it in. Nobody guarding him down low. Javon Griffin's coming back in for the Angels. Checking in for Tristan Terrell. Carey with a little push off. He travels as well. He loses his footing. He's blaming the new shoes. Angels big man senior Tristan Terrell being taught by assistant coach David Carey, I believe, how you have to defend inside. Not happy with his efforts to start out the game so far. 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Hart throws up the shot. Gets his own rebound. Eight. Five seconds to go. Stewart Carter by Carey. Pops a three. Fade away. No good. Rebounded by Robinson. 
And that's the end of the first quarter, where the Angels lead the Warriors 14-11 here at Manual High School. You're watching EA Live TV. Welcome back to Manual High School. At the end of the first quarter, the Angels led the Warriors 14-11. Start of the second quarter here. Griffin, inside. Throws it up. No good. It's missed. Looking for a foul there. Taylor. Charge called. No, a blocking foul called on Brian Carey. Coach Rudy Carey is livid. Um, is that the right call? I'm not sure. I felt like both of the players were a little reckless. Brian Carey definitely didn't have to score, but number four for Mungolo definitely was a little out of control, so I would have gone either way with that one. Hard shot is missed, rebounded by Ronnie Carell. Fire behind his back, dribbles inside, throws up the circuit shot, no good, and he's fouled. That's exactly what will win the Angels basketball games. Why they can set up conventional plays for offense, they also have great athleticism and players that can make spectacular moves like Dominique Collier just did. First free throw was up and good. Second free throw was good as well. 16-11 Angels, 7.20 to go in the first period. They break the press, pass inside the heart, shot is missed. Offensive rebound by Green, but he's fouled. Foul is called on number 24, Dominique Collier. His first personal foul. Angels first, second team foul. First free throw is good. Second free throw attempt. It's also good. 16-13 Angels. First game was pretty rowdy here, the girls game. The, girl, the Angels girls pounded the Lady Warriors. Like not even a close game, they won by nearly 50 points. Rowdy fans though, one was ejected early on in the contest. Stalled game for about 20 minutes. Yeah, the Montbello fans especially, even when their teams don't win, they are still very supportive and sometimes a little too aggressive and a little inappropriate. Big sporting weekend for Denver East High School in addition to the Super Bowl that most of their students will be watching. We have these two big games against Montpelier. Tyree Robinson claims possession and plays it in. Great effort on the offensive end. And he's the only one back on defense. The Angels get beat. Shot by Stewart is missed. Collier runs up the court with the ball. 
crosses over, throws it up with his right hand and lays it in. And with the Angels taking a seven point lead with six minutes to go in the second quarter, the Montbello Warriors need a timeout. And so do we. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to EA Live. Angels lead 20 to 13. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. Bringing up the ball for the Warriors is Stewart. Passes to Taylor. Green drives on Tyree Robinson. Foul is called. Sure looked like ball there. Coach Carey expressing his frustration to the officials. Yeah, that one was a little questionable. I thought that was a very clean, almost a handoff by Chris Jenkins to Tyree Robinson. And I would not have called that foul. First free throw is good. Green had a great start to the game tonight. Two dunks and has gotten to the free throw line multiple times. Free throw is missed. Rebound by Tyree Robinson. Tyree Porter! Tyree Porter! Harrell, corner pass to Griffin, throws it back to Harrell. Far side, three-point line pass inside to Robinson, throws it up. Collier almost there with the putback. Harrell gets the offensive rebound, throws it up, and it's in. Great second chance effort by Ronnie Harrell. Long three-point attempt for Stewart is great. Griffin dumps it off to Collier. Drives. Throws up the circus shot. It's missed. Robinson goes up for the shot, and he's fouled. La foul is called on number four, Malik Taylor. His first personal. First free throw for Robinson is missed. Second free throw is made. Robinson struggled from the free throw line so far this year. Yeah, he has. I don't know if it's just the typical big men struggling with free throws or something else. But ideally, it's not something he needs to be too concerned about, but it is an aspect of, the ga of his game that he could work on. Robinson rejected by Keese, giving him a taste of his own medicine there. Carey jumps it off to Griffin. Directs the offense. Drives. Pump fake. Shot up. Missed. Short. Rebound by Keese. It's getting a little physical down there between Keese and Griffin. Yeah, it's the expectation. He seems like he's driving. Foul called on Griffin. We got to try to come through y'all. We got to try to go through y'all. Go, go, right there, right there. Right there. Right there. Oh. The putback! The putback by Troy Green. He's doing a little gator chomp. Not quite sure what that means. Angels lead 23-19, four minutes to go in the second quarter. Collier pops the three. Airball. He's gonna hear that. 
about it. My fellow fans are rowdy, ladies and gentlemen. In this stadium, you better hope that you don't mess up because the other team's fans will let you know. Again, the Angels had their closest league contest of the year last Thursday night. Lost a one a close game, pardon me, by 11 over Lincoln. Brian Carey runs over to his uncle, the head coach, Rudy Carey. Ronnie loses control of the ball. Robinson inside. Morrell puts it up and in. Angels regain their offensive composure, for lack of a better word. Green. Out to Taylor. Hayes. Taylor smiles while trying to cross up Griffin. Something's going on between the two of them. Yeah. Most of these players in the DPL League all played youth league together. So it's a very good possibility that they know each other. Very physical. Controversial call. Ball is called out on Montbello, giving back to the Angels. Bluebirds are out. Got a great game on our hands here, folks. Angels lead 20-21. Griffin thinks about the three pass to Decare, who does shoot the three, and he misses. Over the back, foul is called. Foul is called on number 24, Troy Green. Angels setting up a box inbound play. Hopefully they're going to pick by Dominique Collier baseline to get Tyree Robinson an open look in the post. Inbound to Collier. They're looking for the alley-oop there, it appears. Ronnie Rell drives, misses, puts it back, and it's good. Green. Three-point attempt from Hayes is long. Called out on Javon Griffin, given back to the Warriors. Checking into the game for the Warriors is number 15, Molly Hart. Hayes throws it up. Missed. Rebounded by Keith, but stolen by Griffin. Angels are going to run. Collier drives, throws up the shot, and it's good. He makes the darndest shots, doesn't he, Ray? I'm serious. There's nothing that this kid cannot do. While he can do all the conventional things like spot up, shoot and three, and catch and shoot, he can make the most ridiculous shots I've ever seen. Hart. Shot is missed by Stewart. Carey has the ball for the Angels. Throws it to Herrera. Come fix. Keith foul going across the lane. The Angels will shoot a 1-1. One 17 one. foul on the Montbello Warriors. The Warriors have done a good job so far, but on defense they've got to be able to move their feet on man-to-man -man coverage because you cannot get the Angels into the bonus. That's the one-on-one -on -one situation too early because they will be non-stop from the line. Can the Angels earn the bonus? Morales first free throw is good. Morrell, the best pure shooter on the Angels team. Made nearly 153 pointers so far this year. Second free throw is good. Angels continue to press. Gaze being trapped by Griffin and Morrell. Ball eventually ends up in the hands of Kendrick Stewart. Robinson swats Jordan Scott's shot. Michael! 
40 seconds left in the second quarter. Angels lead by 10. Physical game. Angels are going to run out the clock, set up for the last shot. Is that smart? I think it is, especially in high school, where you can't hold the ball as long as you want. They can set up something and maybe find holes in the defense while they're rotating the ball around. Ten seconds. Collier. Crossover. Crosses him up. Thanks. He thinks he's out, but he's not. Morell scrambles for the loose ball, but there is nothing called. And that is halftime. And at the end of the second quarter, the Angels lead 31-21. I'm Spencer Slicer along with Ray Pryor and you're watching EALive.TV. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. They're all going to look to make a statement early. You go hard in the paint? Oh yeah. I go hard in the motherfucking paint. I go hard in the paint. Pa pa yeah, yeah, you stank it. Yeah, what the, what the thank it. I don't die for my label, what I talk about. Throw a yard, bro, a day with no one. See Gucci, you can call him real, bro. I hang in the jail with your hands going, boy. Walk a block of play, boy. Mr. 
Demetrius. What else? A couple of was a year, two years ago. Yes, absolutely. We're, we're a lot closer, and we have grown a lot. I mean, we've had pretty much the same team for three years, so. <laughs> what are your expectations for the year? Um, I'm expecting to win state because we control the paint, so honestly, <laughs> we control the game. Is the team better than last year's team? Or the I think so. Right. What's different? Um, I think we just have a lot of experience. There's a lot of seniors. I think there's nine seniors. So everyone's had some experience and we kind of went, last year was kind of like everybody learned how to be on varsity and then this year it's been like just improved. Yeah. What are your expectations for the year? My expectations are that we work as a team to get to state and hopefully win state. What are your expectations for the year? Um, to go undefeated and win state. Is the team better than it was a year or two years ago? Um, yeah, some of us has played uh, with each other since fourth grade. Some of us just three years ago, so pretty close. State title or bust? State title. Do you go hard in the paint? I go hard in the paint. My expectations this year is to help my team do anything and everything we can to. Oh. Oh. I go hard in the pa pa pain. Let you stank it. What the what the thank it? I won't die for my label. What I talk about? Throwing your broad day with no. See Gucci, you can call him Red Bro. I hang in the jail with no hands for a boy. What the fuck I play with? A couple of girlfriends, what? I'm so rich Keep my dick hard yeah. and keep yeah. me shit <laughs> You get bills free, shout it, no joking <laughs> And what I stand for, <laughs> bricks for I'm a doctor this year I think we're going to have a really great team. We've got a great junior class and a great sophomore guard in Brian Carey. Um, we've got some great seniors coming off the bench. You know, we're looking forward to going into the season and making an impact and making a lot of noise here in Colorado. I think that our team, our team leadership is a lot better than it's been in the past. Um, we have a lot of players that want to come out and work hard. Um, every day in practice is a different dedication and motivation to something different. I go hard in the State title or bust? Uh, that's what I think it is. I, I kind of think of us as a Miami team. If you can't lose, otherwise it's just embarrassing. State title, hands down. I mean, that's what our team is working for, you know. We just want to come out and have a good time as a, gr as a group, you know. We have a great skill set and a lot of teams. You know, I don't think there's any team really in the state that can touch us. State title. State title. Oh, we're going to win state. We're going to take it off. I uh, communicate to the kids that it's a championship with us, just like the Miami Heat. We have, a, we have a LeBron James, we have a Dwayne Wade, we have all the talent that the Miami Heat team has. We have that here on the high school level. Um, so, yeah, it's a championship with us. It's a lot of pressure to put on yourself, but I think uh, that's good, healthy pressure. Is the team better than it was a year ago or two years ago? No doubt. We're, we're more mature. Uh, as a team, and we're probably more skilled this year. Is it a state title or bus situation? It's uh, in our sights. You know, we do what we're supposed to do. Uh, we certainly need a little luck to go with that, but we're going to be close. Yeah.
I go hard in the m bang. Yeah, 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 you stank it. Yeah, what the yeah, what the thank it? Thank it. Welcome back to Manuel High School. The end of the first half, the Angels led the Montbello Warriors 31 to 21. Some storylines of note in the first half: Tyree Robinson had four blocks, just like last year, where he averaged six and a half blocks a game. Ronnie Harrell has six rebounds, and leading in a, and leading the team in scoring is Dominique Collier with a game high 12 points. Foul is called on number zero, Amir Hayes Jr. His second personal, first team. Carey drives, passes to Robinson. Griffin, call here for three. Off the front of the rim. Clanks out of bounds. Montbello ball. What kind of position do you think Tyree Robinson could play in high school or in college basketball? He's just 6'6", but plays center. I think that he'll probably play a power forward position. Probably be one of the smaller guys on the roster in terms of their big men. But um, it's a matter of, even though the Angels have a lot of height with their guards, he has to play center on these roster. Right. So, I don't know whether... Tyree Robinson needs to work on his versatility, you know, maybe work on his ball handling because he might have to play some small forward when he gets in the college. But I think he'll be fine, fine at power forward, but he'll find a lot of struggle when he goes up against those 6'7", six, 6'8", six, centers in college. Again, no Denver East Angel recruited as highly as Dominique Collier is receiving offers from schools such as Arizona, Duke, University of Colorado. Stanford, and the list just keeps going. He and Josh Perkins of Regis Jesuit High School are clearly the two most elite basketball players in the state of Colorado. Collier passes inside to Robinson, he slams it home. Angels lead 33-21, 6.22 to go in the third quarter. Bringing up the ball is Amir Hayes Jr. And a charge is called. Charge drawn by Ronnie Harrell. Great defensive awareness by Ronnie. He set his feet on the baseline and let the man run right to him. Foul's called the number three, Kendrick Stewart. Second team foul. Harrell pops the long three, Ronnie! That shot was from another zip code. I think the Long Warriors must have watched some sort of film on the Denver East Angels since they're the number one ranked team and this is a big game. And they had to have noticed how much range Ronnie Harrell has and that you can't give him that much space. And they probably noticed that too. Tyree Robinson with his fifth block of the game. Harrell pops another three is short. Pass up court. Keith lays it home. 36-23, five and a half to go in the third. Exciting start for the third quarter so far. Griffin drives, throws out to Collier. Pass inside. Missed twice by Tyree Robinson. Hart drives on Griffin. Did Tyree Robinson get a piece of that one as well? I'm not sure exactly, but I would bet any day that he did. Again, Tyree Robinson has ups. Hey, 
Angels have their starting five out on the court to start out the third quarter. Carey calls out the play. Throws the ball to Collier. Fakes the three. Throws it to Carey, who drives inside. Puts up the layup. And it's good. Again, the Denver East Angels have lots of fans here today, but the Montmelo Warriors have nearly doubled the fan base that the Angels have. And the shot is laid in by Keese. Ronnie. The shot that carries, spot that carries at right now, Ronnie Harrell range. I don't know if Brian would pull up from there, but definitely. Here comes Ronnie. Shooting across court, he's doubled. Pass to Brian Carey, shoots a three, money. 41-25, Angels taking a big lead to start out the third quarter. 3.48 to go. I think this is where the Angels make a statement in most of their games. The first half can be a little skeptical and they don't pull out a lot. But at the start of the second half, they always get it going quick and then it shows why they are the number one ranked team regardless of what rivalry intensity has. Fortunately, the ball gets stuck in the basket. That's a jump ball. Waits the Angels' uh, possession error they had going for them. Angel ball. Ronnie Garrell pops a three. No good. Even though the Warriors did get away with one, that is not very good defense. They just saw Ronnie pull up from another zip code. They can't let him do it again. Plus, wide open. Tyree Robinson. His sixth block of the game. I don't know what you do as an offensive player when you're driving to the lane and you think you might have your own man. I think when you just see something fly through the air and swat the ball, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Although 6'6", six, six, Tyree Robinson has a long wingspan. Back up, buddy. Green throws up the shot. Foul is called. Coach Carey wants to travel. He better be careful. He could get a technical here. I think Tyree's ability to block shots is probably going to be his most most asset when he goes to the next level. While he doesn't have, you know, the best height, he still can get up there with the biggest guys, and I think that's going to help him be able to perform well with the other guys when he gets up to the next level that are similar to his skill set. Again, Tyree Robinson performs big in big games. Collier's pass inside to Griffin. Griffin throws it to Robinson, who has a sweet dunk. Great awareness by Javon Griffin. He was stuck and he was able to still see through the double team and feed it to Tyree Robinson for the dunk. Green. Pulls up the shot. Misses. Rebounded by Collier. Collier draws the foul. Foul is called by number zero, Amir Hayes Jr. One of the things the Montbello Warriors have to avoid, if anything, is getting into foul trouble. If they get the Angels to the line too quick into the bonus, they're going to lose the game. And Brian Carey calling for the blocking foul. Back on the other end of the court a play ago, that was the same box play that the Angels tried to set up in the first half for the alley -oop. This time they actually got the ball in the air, but Tyree Robinson got dipped under. Free throw is good. Malik Hart had an excellent game so, so far today for the Warriors. Impressive too, he's only a sophomore. <laughs> a 
laid in by Javon Griffin. Javon Griffin, of course, a member of the stellar, and I mean stellar, junior class the Angels have. Drawing the charge for the Angels is junior Dominique Collier. Fouls call them with Taylor. Junior class for the Angels is stacked. Four of the five starters are juniors, and the other is a sophomore. The Angels could continue to be this good for years to come, couldn't they? I think if you're looking at the Denver East Angels, especially even on paper without even watching them play, and you look at their roster and see that they are number one ranked, but they're not a group of seniors that are on the floor. They're a group of juniors and a lot of underclassmen that just have a lot of varsity experience. And it is going to be scary to know that these guys that are number one ranked are going to be here another season. If you're watching EAI TV, we'll be back after this short break. Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash Well, fast enough anymore. Come back to Manuel High School. Angels lead by 17. One minute, 29 seconds to go in the third period. Carey drives the lane, puts up the shot, and it's good. Bringing up the ball for the Warriors is Kendrick Stewart. Pass inside to Green. Green goes up, swatted by Robinson, his seventh block. Carey takes it away. Throws it to Harrell. Looks shot, passes to Griffin. Throws it inside to Robinson, and the pretty play is completed on the layup by Tyree Robinson. That was fantastic. Coach Carey got a little hesitant why Ronnie Harrell didn't pull up for the shot when he was wide open. But he saw Javon Griffin, and he made a great behind the back pass to Tyree Robinson. Stewart with a sweet crossover pulls up for three and he misses. Ball is out on Marvello. Called out on Keys. Battle of the crowds here. Montbello chants, let's go Warriors. The Angels chant their famous Halo cheer. One fact that I think is a little dismissed when you have a big rivalry game like this, with so much fan base from both teams, especially Montbello, Montbello is losing by 21 points. The lead has grown a lot and it's been very subtle, because for the Angels this is just expected. This is what they're supposed to do. Less than a second to go, eight tenths of a second to be exact. Foul is called. Inbound pass, shot is thrown up and it's no good. And that's the end of the third quarter where the Angels open up their lead and lead 49 to 28 after three quarters. You're watching EA Live TV. This is a total team effort. We're going to try to dictate to you what you're going to do on both offense and defense. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. But now it's time to put the hats on and go get some work done. So they're all going to look to make a statement early.
Warriors, 49-28. Pass inside from Stewart to Green, and he throws it home. Great job by the Warriors coming right out of the quarter and getting set up for the dunk. Again coming out for the Angels is the starting five. Only one bench player has played in this game. That is something interesting I noticed. Roy Carey is always one of the small one of the top putting in reserves when the Angels are up big. But these starters have been playing pretty much the whole game. Griffin tries to save it. It appears there shouldn't have been a point to the referee to confer. Ball given to the Angels. Seven twenty-four to go in the fourth quarter. Angels setting up to play five man. A lot of ball screen for the catch and shoot for a lot of the shooters. Brian Carey for a second three of the quarter. It's also good. He got a little strut after that three pointer. Did you see that, Ray? Yeah, I did see it, Spencer. Stewart. Very quick, drives inside. Second he sees Robinson gets rid of the ball. That's exactly what I it's saw. Like seeing a monster. But Robinson is nowhere to be found there. Keith lays it in for the Mavelo Warriors. Collier able to hold on to the ball despite the tight defense played by Mavelo. Griffin for three. Good. Angels three of three from the three-point line to start out the quarter. Suddenly leading 58 to 32. I think it's really been like that. A lot of it has just been dismissed because the Angels just do it so naturally. And that ball is sitting on the top of the rim. I guess that's a jump ball. I've never seen anything like that. I saw that once on TV and I'm not sure if that was real. But I've seen that for the first time today in real life. Yeah, I literally balanced on top of the rim. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Running Harrell had to be careful there. If he touched the ball too soon before the ref blew the whistle, it could have been called a goal test. Well, they, they got the last one. They got the last one. We got that one. Two jump balls, one possession there, I guess. Foul is called on Montbello as number 10. Karamoko Kees. Sixteen foul next to put the Angels in the bonus. 6.09 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Angels lead 58 to 32. Ronnie Guerrero pops a three. Missed. The Angels start out the quarter now three of four from the three-point line. Rebounded by Keese. Loose foul. Loose ball foul called on number 25. Ronnie Morrell. Pardon me, it was a foul called on number 24, Dominique Collier. 14 foul. Inbound pass to Cardo, who pops a three, he misses. Rebounded by Green, who puts it up. And foul is called. It's great to see Green from Mumbo Warriors still being aggressive. Up above the rim, even though Tyree Robinson has a great game with blocks. Tyree Robinson called for the foul. Three on Tyree. His third, Three on Tyree. team fifth. First free throw is good. Green. Green doesn't have much skin showing. He's got sleeves on his arms and sleeves on his shoulders. He's wearing leg warmers, high socks. Looks like he's wearing a bodysuit. No kidding. Long three-point attempt for Stewart is missed. Rebounded by Collier. Griffin throws it up. Air ball. Contact. No foul called on the play. Griffin steals it. Throws it up the court to Robinson. It should be good. The windmill. We saw that a couple of games ago against Denver Lord, and it's come back tonight wide open. Tyree Robinson smashes it down. Wow. That'll be on the highlight reel tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Collier to make it a 30 point lead, he misses. Montbello 
Stewart throws up the left-handed reverse layup and it's good. Collier. Near side key. Carries pass to Griffin inside. He loses control, but a foul is called on the play. Fouls called by number four, Malik Taylor. Puts the Angels in the bonus. But they'll shoot two anyways, despite the fact that they're in the bonus because it is a shooting foul. That is something to notice. There's still four minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. And the Montbello Warriors wanted any shot to get back in this game. Now they have to avoid fouling at all costs because they can get to the line and most likely get points off. 431 to go here in the fourth quarter. Senior Keegan Den Rhodes and senior Kendra Kelly check into the game. The only two reserves to play despite Tristan Turow. Coach Carey now feels comfortable with the lead the Angels have built. The end of the Angels bench, if they were their own team, could they be one of the best teams in the state of Colorado? I'm not sure about that. That's a little bit of a stretch. But they are definitely an asset to this team, and the bench learns a lot from the starters, and they push them in practice a lot. The bench is very much of an asset, and a reason why the Angels are doing so well. 4.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Angels blowing out the Montbello Warriors 62-35. to Stewart dumps it off to Hayes. Hayes loses control of the ball. Able to keep it inbounds. Throws it to Grubbs. Stewart with the crossover. Stolen from him by Kelly. Foul is called. Foul is called on number five, Randall Jones. Checking in for Ronnie Harrell is number 33, J.C. Floyd. Inbound pass goes to Whitmore. Reserves in for both teams, with the exception of Dominique Collier and Troy Green. Dunn Rhodes comes down with the board. Collier drives. He's fouled. Hard foul. They hug it out. It's all good. No love lost here. Foul is called on number one, David Whitmore. His first personal foul. His second minute of action. 18 foul. It's a great job by Montbello Warriors to show such good sportsmanship. When you have this big of a deficit, especially against a big robber game like this, it's very easy to let your emotions get ahead of you and you get a, lot of, a little out of control mentally. But they've kept their composure and tried to get back in this game and see if it hasn't worked out. Again, this game was not always a blowout. Very close throughout the first half. Back and forth, it seemed. I feel like that's the story with a lot of Eastern basketball games. They don't always start off super quickly, or maybe it's just that their opponents get off to a good start. But the Angels always stretch to show why they're the number one team in the second half. Next on tap for the Angels is a tough game against Highlands Ranch as Dominic Collier checks out of the game. February 9th, which is our next broadcast of boys basketball, they'll be playing at Denver University. Big stage for the Angels, be televised obviously here on EALive.tv. Ray and I will be bringing that game to you. Should be a good time. Highlands Ranch, of course, beat East Ad DU last year. This will be the second meeting they've had. Angels, of course, hoping for revenge. And Highlands Ranch, not as good of a team as they were last year. And the Angels, of course, a way better team than they were a year ago. Yeah, it's great to see how those kind of games can already start bringing history between high schools. And then when they meet again, it's just a great 
matchup. You know, obviously the Angels will have all the upper hand and the high of the All right, it's the underdog of the game, but it should be a good game to watch. It's going to be a great night. Should be a good one. 7 o'clock. Stewart to the line. Misses his first. But hits his second. 28 point lead for the Angels. No regulars in the game for East. Nor are there any for Montbello. Garbage time here with three minutes to go in the fourth period. The Angels lead by 28. 64 to 36. The fourth quarter for these East Angels reserves is very important to this second team. This is the time where they can show Coach Carey why they deserve to be on the roster and hopefully get some, some playing time. Coach Carey leans over to the desk. He'd like to give a shout out to his two daughters, Brandy and Val, watching at home. Dad loves you. Got to obey by the coach, especially if he's got his team ranked number one in the state. <laughs> Ball stepped out off of the Angels, given back to the Warriors. Coach Carey has developed a very good reputation around Denver. He even coached at Manuel High School some years ago. Seems like Manuel was one of those places that was just alive in the 80s and the 90s, probably in the 70s too, and not as big of a an attraction to come here anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're in the rebuilding stage. They're trying to put something together. Maybe their coaching staff isn't working out so well. But it is a little disappointment to see Manuel not doing so well athletically when they have such a big history and reputation here in Denver, Colorado. Again, Manuel and East used to be pretty fierce rivals. It's almost a joke by now. Cool arena here, though, the Thunderdome. Nice landscape, kind of dark. Great for a day game, it seemed like. Sun was shining through the windows here. It was pretty. Yeah, it's nice in Colorado that we have almost summer days in February. Of course, those felt in here in the gym today. J.C. Floyd to the line. Gets his first shot of the one and one. He'll get another. 158 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Angels lead 65-36. Make that 66-36. Grubbs. He's got some wild hair there. Nice long dreadlocks for Grubbs. That was Ballard. very good defense by Jason Floyd. He kept with, you know, what seems to be a smaller man, it's very hard for big, some big man to guard you know, smaller guards that are usually a lot quicker, but J.C. Floyd did a great job of moving his feet and making that shot tough. Fouls call on number 14 to the senior Keegan Dunroads. His first personal foul, team foul. First free throw is missed. Grubbs hits the second, one of two. This is kind of a funky sight, Randall Jones bringing up the ball. Goofy kid. I like him a lot. Checking into the game is Garrett Flagel, who has not seen time at all this year. It'd be nice to see if he can maybe get a shot in it too. Yeah, he was recently added to the roster, second semester. Ben Rhodes grabs the rebound, throws it up to Zedis. Zedis drives, throws it to Jones. Jones with the cop to Keita Mocross. And Mokras misses a three. Mokras, good, good transition defense is there. Great defensive rebound shot by J.C. Floyd, even though he was getting a lot of physical contact. Floyd, kick sent by Den Rhodes. Floyd doesn't want to shoot the two, but he does. So was on the line, that's why it was a two. Rebound. Grubbs. It's interesting to see how this game, even with the Angels reserves in, hasn't really changed. The functioning of the plays is still there. You know, 
no matter how deep the Angels go in their roster in a game. It's great to know as a coach that you have a bench like that in case one of you starters goes down with an injury. A little less than 25 seconds to go here in the fourth period. Continue, Ray. I'm sorry. You know, it's great. It's great confidence for a coach to know that their bench can still actually play similarly to um, the starting five. And it just gives you a lot of options offensively to know that it's not necessarily personnel that wins your games. Shot is missed. And the na-na-na goodbye chance have begun. Ten seconds to go here. This game is over. The Angels are going to win this one, 66 to 37. Going to improve their record and remain unbeaten in the state of Colorado. Pretty remarkable uh, stat, isn't it? That is impressive. It's the only reason why the Angels have any losses on the record is because they go out and play a national tournament. And that'll do it for us here tonight. The Angels beat the Warriors 66-37. Good night.